Welcome to the Zimcast, a program dedicated to bringing you what's new in agricultural marketing. The Zimcast is the official podcast of AgWired and hosted by Chuck and Cindy Zimmerman. Hello and welcome to the Zimcast. I'm Chuck Zimmerman. Once again, I learned all about what's new in the world of agribusiness for Syngenta during the Commodity Classic, which was just held in Houston, Texas. So this episode will feature interviews I did in the Syngenta booth. Between Cindy and myself, this was our seventh conference of the year. You can find virtual newsrooms from them all on agnewswire.com. In there are photos and lots of interviews. So these are some of the interviews that I picked out to provide a good selection of topics from Syngenta. I picked out interviews that will provide a good selection of topics from Syngenta, and I'll introduce each one as we move through the program. And we're going to start with Eric Boyk, Regional Director, North America Seeds at Syngenta. Eric, great to see you. Tell me a little bit about what's top of mind right now uh, for Syngenta Seeds here in North America. Yeah, you know, what's top of mind for me, as always, is farmers. And, uh, and in particular, you know, ag economy is changing. And so we're really pointing our team at how do we help farmers be profitable and strive to get a good return on their investment and drive a really, really significant uh, improvement in their yields. Um, that is th- obviously the top line of their, uh, of, their, of their profitability equation. So making sure we're partnering with farmers, as always, to do the right thing. With um, Syngenta Seeds, you cover a, a broad range of brands, uh, NK, Golden Harvest, GHX. How would you describe the changes that you've seen with Syngenta as it's uh, grown some of its R&D and innovation products? The beauty of what we are doing at Syngenta Seeds is no, if you've met one farmer, you've met one farmer meaning every farmer is unique to who they are. And when we think about the NK brand, for example, NK is sold exclusively through the retail channel. And those farmers really like to have a, uh, a, a experience buying from retail where they can buy all their inputs from one location. Uh, whereas our GHX route to market is really thinking about farmers that are multi-generational. So think about grandpa, dad, and and grandson, like I grew up on our farm uh, that way, where you have multi-generations of farmers farming together. And actually, those farmers are about 55% of all the output in agriculture right now. So they have somebody who's a landowner, somebody who's digitally oriented, somebody who's really after maximizing their profitability through an advisor. And that's what the GHX model does for us. And then we actually have our Greenleaf licensing model that serves independent seed companies in the marketplace as well to provide good genetics and good traits. And as many people know, there's not very many genetics and trait providers in the industry. So Syngenta, as a choice for independent seed companies, is ultimately a choice for farmers to help drive competition. So we're at a um, record number of growers here for Commodity Classic. What do you want them to take away from Syngenta Seeds? Yeah, I think Syngenta Seeds is a really good partner for farmers. Uh, We are a company that can help them drive their productivity and drive their bottom line through our genetics and our traits. Um, And even if you're not a grow crop farmer, if you're a livestock farmer, we have our energy and feed portfolio to really drive feed efficiency, drive uh, and, and help actually cons- market to consumers as well with a product that produces less CO2, plus less emissions into the air, less waste out of the animal, more milk, more beef uh, from the animal through that feed. So we can be a really strong partner, and we complement that actually with our seed care products, our Cruiser Max a- Apex seed treatment, our uh, our industry renowned. Uh, portfolio of herbicides and fungicides and insecticides that go with it. So we're, we can be that complete solution for farmers to help them drive their profitability. How about from the standpoint of sustainability? I know Syngenta's got a, a sustainability plan. Tell us a little bit about that. You know, we get a lot more questions 
in the past couple of years versus the prior five years or so around sustainability. The conversations I've been in are about you know, carbon indexing scoring with industry associations, but also larger farmers, progressive farmers that are really interested in lowering their carbon score so that they can take advantage of some of the premium opportunities uh, and then market to a changing consumer who's going to put more value on carbon. Carbon. That's going back to energy and feed. That's what we are really excited about with energy and feed is the ability to help a dairy producer or help a livestock or a cattle producer be able to maximize their profitability, but also market their crop, their their product, their milk or their beef, in a way that's carbon friendly to a uh, to a consumer. Well, something that definitely comes up uh, is foreign ownership of, of land. Uh, it, it comes up. How does Syngenta fit into that sort of political football that we got going? Political football is not necessarily fun, but uh, you know we really think as a foreign-owned company, we believe, and there's many agricultural foreign-owned companies, but we really believe that uh, the best place to start is what's best for the farmer. And what's best for the farmer is competition and choice. Um, and if we work back from there, then that allows us to work with the industry associations and the, the governing bodies to find the right level of regulation. And, and we believe, for example, that a really strong CFIUS, which monitors all foreign land purchases, is important because that allows us to do business in the right way for farmers. Before we close, what else would you want folks to know about uh, what you're doing with Syngenta Seeds that, that we didn't touch on? Yeah, and I'm sure you've probably heard a lot from our people, but we had the biggest and best launch class of corn and soybean varieties that we've had in the really in the last 20 years of Syngenta Seeds. The research and product development that started in 2018 Uh, is now, corn is a seven-year cycle, they like to say. That's really starting to come through for farmers um, in in North America, and we're excited about that. Um, We're excited about being able to provide a choice of high-yielding soybean genetics to farmers in both the ExtendFlex package and the Enlist E3 package. We're one of the only companies that can do that for farmers, and that's really important given some of the recent legislation that's happened in court rulings, not knowing exactly what herbicide options are going to be available for farmers. We can be, the again, the partner of choice for farmers. Eric, it's great to uh, see you and visit with you here. Next, I talked with Liz Hunt, Sustainable and Responsible Business Head for Syngenta. First of all, Liz, tell us what you do. I head our Sustainable and Responsible Business Team for North America, which is kind of the intersection of corporate responsibility and commercial solutions for sustainability. Well, tell us a little bit about how Syngenta is helping customers, growers, to use data, for example, to advance their on-farm sustainability and and improve their productivity and output? So uh, the data question is always the biggest challenge for sustainability, but the, the approach that we have taken with our sustainability team at Syngenta is thinking about sustainability as kind of a giant swimming pool where you've got the deep end of the swimming pool and you have a shallow end of the swimming pool, and sustainability is anywhere along that whole spectrum. So we want solutions for farmers to meet them wherever they are in that sustainability journey. So we have you know, shallow end approach for our crop-wise sustainability, which is just a series of yes-no questions that can tell you how are you doing in 30 minutes or so on your sustainability journey, to deeper data analytics at a field level where you can really dig into, you know, some of those, those field level agronomic questions or understanding the nutrient use efficiency, the, the yields, the productivity, the profitability at that deep field level end of the spectrum. Do you think that farmers are more knowledgeable about this and wanting to do more sustainable practices? So I think farmers are one of the most knowledgeable on sustainable practices on their farms, and they always have been. I think what's bringing more 
maybe of a spotlight to some of this conservation ag is around some of the investments that are being made with the Climate Smart grants that were announced last year, um, different programs, a lot more um, food companies and such are making um, more public commitments and are getting more engaged at the farm level. And I think that's driving some of the interest. But I, I would still go back to farmers know their sustainability story first. And there's just more kind of spotlight with some of these ancillary programs. What do you uh, think you're going to be talking to these growers coming in here? What would be the questions you expect to have to answer to them? Well, what is sustainability is is the first question that always always comes up. Um, and, you know, we can talk about that from a textbook definition of sustainability with grounding yourself in, you know, the environment and the profitability and the social components of it. But I think one of the things that kind of is continuing to reoccur, farmers, again, are have a lot of great sustainability stories, but how can they ground that story in something that's credible um, and something you know that, that kind of gives a bit of a framework to that discussion? And that's what we've really tried to do with our CropWise Sustainability app, too, and the standard that we wrote within there is to give them that framework so they can talk about crop production, they can talk about soil health, they can talk about, you know, the water impact on their operation, human-animal health, biodiversity, community leadership. There's so many different aspects of sustainability, and everybody's doing something, and everybody has an opportunity to do something more, and we just try to frame that up for them. I guess before closing out here, what would be the main thing that you would want um, growers to know? I, I think everybody has a really great story to tell, so take that opportunity to tell that story every chance you get. People want to hear from farmers. They trust farmers. Um, they love to eat. So anytime they get that opportunity to tell their own story, that's more meaningful than anything either of us could ever tell to consumers. Well, thank you very much, Liz, for visiting with me here. I talked with Jim Scherzer. He's head of branded marketing for Syngenta North America Seeds. Tell me, first of all, a little bit, Jim, what do you do? So I lead all of our marketing brands uh, from Syngenta Seeds, so Golden Harvest being one of those, of course, GHX, and then also NK. We're at Commodity Classic, uh, a record crowd here this year, so you got a lot of customers coming by, I know. Tell us a little bit about the ways that you are getting your brand, these brands out um, to your customers, and what does that mean for them? Yeah, Chuck, that's a great question. You know, we've got a really unique story to tell with all the investment that we've put into not only the brands, but Syngenta Seeds. You think about the investments we've done in R&D. So we've been trying to look for different ways to share that message out for farmers to, to learn more about those investments and how it's helping them uh, on their farms. You have some very unique ones. Um, let's just say NASCAR. Tell us a little bit about that program. Yeah, we entered a relationship with Sammy Smith. He's a up-and-coming driver in the NASCAR series. Uh, this year he's in the Xfinity series, which is the next series below NASCAR. He's with Dale Jr. Motorsports, so we are on uh, his number eight car. We'll be taking local customers and sellers to these events. We'll use them in some of our promotions. His He'll be racing a, a truck this year as well. We'll have that truck at Farm Progress show later this year. So it's a really unique experience to tell our story about speed, precision, and power, uh, which is kind of our mantra in R&D, but connect that to a farmer and how that what that means for them and using racing to do that. And he knows a little bit about farming now that he's had this experience, I guess you would. Yeah, so that, that is the fun part of getting involved in some of these type of sponsorships is often you get a chance to teach, for example, Sammy, what farming's all about. And, and, and you start to relate how farmers use technology, how farmers use power or speed to do the, you know what they do in their operation and how that relates to racing. And we connect those dots, and it's funny to see someone like Sammy get excited about it and actually want to get out and ride in a tractor, get in a combine, et cetera. So. Other things that uh, you're doing, uh, of course, you have the mobile app for GHX. Um, when it comes to the digital area, what, 
that's one, but are there others? Yeah, the app was a big, we made a big move uh, in this past year of opening that GHX app for anybody as a guest that wants to go on and learn more, download the app. You don't have to have a GHX account with us to go explore all of the digital tools and the way that we're unlocking data to help farmers become more profitable through GHX. So that's a great opportunity for a farmer to enter in and learn more about GHX. What else would you want the uh, farmers coming through here to know about what you guys are doing in the seed area? Yeah, so we're going to be, of course, you know, we're at Commodity Classic. We'll be at the other traditional farm shows that maybe farmers like to attend throughout the summer. Uh, you'll start uh, hearing us on radio, see us in print, on digital. Uh, we've got our John Force Racing partnership, of course, with Sammy. So we're trying to get our brands and our message out there in many ways so farmers can continue to learn more. But the best way is to connect with our local sellers. Uh, they're the ones that are, you know, can really help you see not only what our brand's doing, but the products that are right for your farm. I think that some of your customers have uh, done well in some of the yield contests. Syngenta's helped some of those, right? Yeah, so we've got a group here, both on soybeans and on corn, some uh, state winners. Uh, some of those soybean yields, I was looking at the sheet the other day, just impressive how uh, much we're getting out of these soybean genetics today. So yeah, we're celebrating them and their success, but it's important. This is important to us, Chuck, because as you think about where the economy is starting to look like from an ag perspective, farm income is going to be compressed. And one of those ways to help buffer that is continuing to push yield and do it in a profitable way. So that's what we're here this week to really share and celebrate with those farmers, them pushing yield in a profitable way uh, for their farms. And you've got some milestones, uh, legacy brands. NK comes first to mind, of course, uh, I think 140 years and Golden Harvest at 50. That's got to be worth telling people about. It is. There's a sense of pride that comes with legacy within brands. As a marketer, it is fun when you've got legacy like that. It's also fun when you have something new like GHX. So we're lucky. We have that balance of, of something that's new and different. But we've got that foundation with GH, Golden Harvest at 50 years, and you mentioned NK at 140 years, and leveraging that legacy and foundation that those brands have had. Well, before we close, is there anything else you'd like uh your customers to know that might be coming by here to say hello? Well, the one thing is, you know, it's always reminded if spring is right on the on, on the doorstep and just wishing everybody a safe planting season, it, you know, things look like it's shaping up. Could be an early one. Who knows? Mother Nature will dictate that. But, you know, as we get into that spring rush, just everyone be safe. All right. Well, thank you very much, Jim, for taking some time to visit with me here. In the same interview, I interviewed Matt Dolch and Jared Benson, NK Corn and Soybean Product Managers. First of all, Matt and Jared, tell me a little bit about yourself, and let's start with you, Matt. Matt Dolch, NK Corn Product Manager, live in Lincoln, Nebraska. I've been with Syngenta 15 years now and look forward to working with growers and retailers and our sales team or anything corn. And you, Jared. Yeah, I'm Jared Benson. I'm the NK Soybean Product Manager. I'm based out of uh, Des Moines, Iowa. I'm a breeder by training, and so I love talking about our products and how we design them to fit the growers' needs. Well, we've done this before, and I uh, always enjoy having this opportunity. So here uh, we have a record crowd for Commodity Classic. You're going to have a lot of growers here. What is it that you want them to most know when they come in to visit with you? And let's start on the uh, corn side. NK Corn new. Uh, 40% of our portfolio is, is brand new. We think about 32 hybrids within the last two seasons, 12 for 2025. Uh, that's a huge portion of the portfolio that people haven't experienced, farmers haven't experienced. So invite you to check out our new lineup, bringing Duracade Viptera, Viptera Trait Stacks with Elite Genetics here for performance in those farmers. How about you, Jared, on the soybean side? You know, what we really want growers to understand is that NKCs is a better experience. And so when they come, they can have genetics that they trust, that they know will perform. Uh, we're really excited. Last year we had 39 products of our portfolio that broke 100 bushels in our internal and external research trials. And so we're really proud about the genetics and what we have to offer. What are some of the ways that uh, you are making the process of, of buying your seed uh, easier, I guess, uh, more profitable for them. Uh, what are some ways you do that kind of stuff? 
I think you've got to ask the questions, what are your goals as a farmer, number one? If you don't know your goals as a farmer, what your yield goals are and what you hope to do, uh, we can't help you. So we help try to answer some of those questions or ask some of those questions. But retailers and our sales team working side by side with farmers to understand exactly what field we're planting a crop on, what what the cropping practices have been, gives us a good understanding to make that right hybrid recommendation when we think about placement. How about you, Jared? What do you think? You know, I think a lot of it comes down to making sure that we have the right products. And really, to me, that comes down to products that are consistent and that are versatile. So when we think about some of the big trends, we think about the early planting and soy on soy or no-till. We want to make sure that we have products that are designed that really fit all of those needs. And so, again, if a farmer goes and, and has a product that maybe they can't get into the field early because of the rain, they can be confident that they still have a product that they know is going to perform any, given any management approach that they want to take. There were a lot of challenges this last year. What's your outlook a little bit, you know, in lieu of last year, uh, what might come about this year? Yeah, a couple things top of mind. Uh, number one, corn rootworm control, certainly a significant issue, taking $1 billion in profits away from farmers each and every year. Duracade Viptera trait stack, most comprehensive control in the industry, and providing uh, Duracade here to control corn rootworm, really important. So that's number one. I think the strength of our disease portfolio with NK corn, managing tar spot, northern corn leaf blight, Goss's wilt. Uh, we've got a really strong portfolio. The 25 class, no exception here with really good strength in that area. For me, I, you know, I think about the winter that we're having right now, and it's been really warm, and I think farmers are going to get into the field really early. That early planting trend is going to be important. And, and going back to this comment, we've got genetics that we know that can perform really well on that top end, but we also have the genetics that are going to perform and protect that yield. So when we think about early planting, you've got to have the emergence, you've got to have white mold, SDS, phytophthora protection, and we have some excellent excellent products with just lights out, shut down performance to really, again, allow those farmers to maximize their ROI potential. Well, I know that uh, Syngenta had really revived the NK brand. I mean, it's 140 years you're, you're celebrating this year, so that's that's a major milestone. We're excited. Uh, it's not your grandparents' NK. We, we certainly value the history and tradition, but the, the rate of new genetics and technology we're bringing forward is certainly what excites me about the NK brand. You go back a long time, uh, you know, 4640 BT was the number one selling hybrid in the U.S., bar none, uh, during its its launch, and, and bringing forward BT proteins in the marketplace to manage corn earworm, really important here, and, and we're building on that strength here with the 25 launch class. Well, before we uh, close out here, what else would you want uh, growers to know that we didn't touch on for each of you? You know, really, I think the big the big part for me is, you know, we have such a great uh, set of products here on either trait platform. And really, that's the thing that if we can have products that you can feel comfortable with, confident in, that you know are going to perform, that's what we want them to understand. To see the trust that we have, backed by our strong R&D program, we're designing products that we know are going to succeed. From a corn standpoint, I think we want folks to know that we're doing exactly what we said we're going to do. Brand new genetics with elite traits. So you think about a 50% increase in the Viptera offering within current hybrids for this 2025 season. That's huge in this next year's launch class to help manage western bean cutworm, fall uh, armyworm, corn earworm. Uh, so we want to help farmers, partner with them, uh, work with our retail partners. But wish everybody a, a safe spring ahead. That's around the corner. Safety is number one for us. Uh, we want you to be successful out in the field. All right, well, thank you very much, Matt and uh, Jared, for visiting with me here. And finally, I interviewed Kramer Farney. He's the Golden Harvest Head of Marketing. First of all, uh, Kramer, tell me what you do. Yeah, I lead our Golden Harvest Marketing, uh, working with farmers and dealers all across the country and plant, who are planting Golden Harvest. Well, you have a big milestone to be celebrating here with Golden Harvest. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we're entering now our 50th planting season. 50th planting season coming up this spring. We're really excited about that, being 50 years partner with farmers across the United States. And then obviously throughout the summer and fall, we'll then enter our 50th harvest season. And yeah, across a big milestone is the American seed business. So besides being 50 years to celebrate, you've also had uh, a lot of luck with some of the uh, contests with some of your hybrids. Uh, done well, right? Yeah, we are really pleased this year to welcome eight NCGA state winners here to Commodity Classics. So they're here with us. They'll be doing some interviews this week. Um, everywhere from Nebraska to North Dakota, Wisconsin, uh, all over, our hybrids are really performing strongly. And so we're really happy with our corn lineup and what it's doing. Well, tell us a, 
a little bit about some of the ones, especially that uh, led the uh, contest. Yeah, some fun stories in there. A lot of different cropping systems we've seen, no-till, conventional till, strip till. Also, wide range of ages. Uh, we have, our think, our first high school winner that we've ever had as an NCGA winner. Um, and up to, you know, really generational farms. And so, yeah, just a lot of diversity in there, and it's fun to see all those people, you know, working with Golden Harvest, being part of the Golden Harvest family. So what's your focus here at this conference with the growers that are going to be walking through here? Um, so I told you about our yield winners. I told you NCGA, we've got them. We also have our 14 go for the gold winners, so we're, we'll be so celebrating their success. You know, we have Gold Series soybeans and Golden Harvest, and we have these 14 winners from across the states, four of those over 100 bushel in their state. So that's some really exciting stuff. So that's one of the things we're doing is just celebrating them while also really building the awareness around around what GHX is, our new route to market, and what we can bring in, you know, value to farmers all across through GHX Mobile and GHX as an offer. Thank you very much, Kramer, for visiting with me here. Next on the Agri-Blogging Highway, Cindy will be at the ACE DC Fly-In. I will be at the AgriPulse Ag and Food Policy Summit and National Ag Day activities. Then we'll both be at the Agri-Marketing Conference in Kansas City, Missouri. We'll have a booth in the Connection Point. We launched Zimcom publicly at the 2004 Agri-Marketing Conference. We're already celebrating 20 years since we created Zimcom, and what a long, strange trip it's been. By the way, I did see Grateful Dead live and in concert many, many years ago. That's the Zimcast for now. I hope you enjoy it, and thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Zimcast, the official podcast of AgWired. Check us out at www.agwired.com to find out what's new in agricultural marketing. 